Hello and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by MTG Mudster. Errata do have affinity for generic goblin noises. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. I also want to let you know that Flipside Gaming will be giving away a box of War of the Sparks. From April 1st through May 6th, any order that's over $10 or more will get you entered to win. One entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today we have two brand new faces bringing some old commanders. First up, we have Joey playing the Moldy Moldratha, keeping three forests, Tainted Wood, Crystal Vein, Temple of Deceit, and a Mana Vault. Alex is playing the mind-bending Marie Cree Barrett, keeping a watery grave, control magic, path to exile, serum visions, swamp, illusionist bracers, and mirrored landscape. Jason has brought the queen of the fae, Una, but she's got a secret in store, and he keeps his swamp, necropotence, jet medallion, beacon of unrest, deserted temple, and diabolic tutor. And last but not least, you better hope it's not a full moon out, because Jean René, aka JR, is playing his Ulrich of the Kralin Horde deck, keeping gruel turf, Forest, Durable Handicraft, Invasion Plan, Decimate, Sage of Ancient Lore, and Moon Mist. Alex wins the die roll and starts us off. Alex plays a Water Grave untapped, taking two, and he casts his Serum Visions to help set up his next draw. Jason plays a Swamp and passes. JR plays a Forest, passing. Choey plays a Temple of Deceit, which comes in tapped, and he scries one, keeping it there. Alex plays a tap myriad landscape and passes to Jason. Jason plays a second swamp, casting a jet medallion and passing turn. JR plays a gruel turf and he bounces his basic forest back to hand. Joey plays a crystal veins and taps it to cast a mana vault. Alex plays Manamo, school at water's edge, and he passes. Jason plays a deserted temple, and he casts Praetor's Grasp and targets Joey. He goes into Joey's library, exiles a card, and passes to JR. JR plays a Temple of Abandon and casts a Gruel Signet. He passes, scrying while Joey starts his turn. Joey plays a Forest, and he casts Spore Frog. Alex responds to this by sacrificing his landscape to go and find two planes. Alex plays an Exotic Orchard for his land for turn, and he casts his Commander. He then drops a Mother of Ruins to help eventually protect Mariki, and he passes. Jason casts a Diabolic Tutor in his main phase, probably needing to find a land. He passes without playing one though, which is a bit of a surprise. JR plays a Forest, and he casts his Commander, Ulrich, before passing to Joey. Joey drops a Swamp for turn, and he brings up Moldratha, passing. Alex plays a Swamp and casts his Illusionist Bracers. He equips them onto Mareki and then taps her. This lets him steal two creatures instead of one, and the only real targets just so happen to be other people's commanders. Jason needs to only pay three mana in his main phase to cast Lilia of the Dark Realms. He upticks her to go and find a Swamp, putting it to hand and then playing it for turn. JR taps out on his turn, and he casts an Invasion Plan, followed by a Durable Handiwork. The whole table takes a minute to read the cards, and JR then passes to Joey. Joey takes one from his vault on his upkeep, and he casts Pattern of Rebirth on his Spore Frog. He then passes. Alex draws for turn, and moves to combat. He swings Muldrotha at Liliana, and Ulrich at Joey. Joey responds by sacrificing the Spore Frog to fog the combat step, and Jason returns the Liliana he preemptively dumpstered. Joey then goes to find a clever impersonator from his library from the pattern of her birth trigger, and has it come in as a copy of Muldratha. Alex then casts his Swiftfoot Boots in his second main phase, and he puts them onto the stolen Muldratha and passes to Jason. Jason upticks Liliana in his main phase, and grabs and plays another swamp from his library. He then casts Mutilate, which if it resolves, will give all the creatures minus four minus four. It does, and this kills most everything, and Muldratha also goes to the command zone as Mariki dies, which in turn has her killing the creature she steals as she goes out. JR draws and plays a forest. 
He casts a Sage of the Ancient Lore and pays one for the Gerbil Handicraft to give it a plus one plus one counter as it enters, and he draws a card. Joey loses another one in his upkeep, and he pays to cast Machaeus the Unhallowed. He then casts a Spore Frog from the graveyard, and he passes to Alex. Alex plays a Swamp, and he casts Control Magic. He steals Joey's Moldrotha clone, which I guess is better than stealing the real thing, and he passes. Jason upticks Ileana again, and he goes to find a Swamp and plays it. He then passes. On JR's upkeep, his Sage of Ancient Lore gets to flip and transforms into a Werewolf of Ancient Hunger. He casts an Instigator Gang in his main phase and moves to combat. He swings the Werewolf at Joey, who fogs with the Spore Frog, and with nothing else, JR passes. Joey plays a Tainted Wood as his land for turn, and he casts a Sylvan Safekeeper. With the Elf on the stack, Alex uses Pass to Exile to remove Machaeus from the field. Joey goes and grabs a basic island and puts it to the field. Joey then casts an Altar of Dementia, and he passes. At the end of turn, Alex cracks his landscape again and goes to find two more matching basics. On Alex's upkeep, the werewolf shifts back to being an ancient, and Alex replays his myriad landscape as his land for turn with a stolen cloned Muldratha. He then brings back Mariki and gives her some used bracers and boots before moving to combat. He swings Muldratha at Jason's Liliana again, and this time Joey doesn't have any real reason to save her. Jason pays 3 in his main phase, and he drops Necropotence. He pays 5 in his main phase to set aside 5 cards, and then moves to his end step, putting them to hand. He then nests the discard down to 7, and the cards that he discards get exiled thanks to Necropotence. JR untaps, and he casts Decimate in his main phase, making a bit of a mistake as he targets the Necropotence, the Swiftfoot Boots, Mareki, and one of Joey's lands. Sadly, no one else catches it either, and Alex responds to the spell by tapping his commander and seals the two werewolves on JR's side. With Mariki dying, so do the werewolves, and with nothing else, JR passes. Joey loses one to the vault, and he casts a pernicious deed in his main phase and passes to Alex. Alex plays a plains and recasts his commander from the graveyard with his cloned copy of Muldratha. He recasts the Swiftfoot boots and equips them onto Mareki, basically negating the whole decimate. Alex then moves to combat, and swings the stolen Muldratha at Joey. Joey in turn, fogs with the Spore Frog. Alex then sacrifices the Myriad Landscape again, and finds two more basic islands, passing. Jason draws for turn, and plays a Swamp. He casts Una, and then passes turn. JR plays a Forest, and he drops Nylea, God of the Hunt. He also casts a Village Messenger, and pays the one for the Durable Handicraft trigger to give it a plus one plus one counter. Joey loses one to the Vault trigger, and Joey and Jason make a deal. Jason won't exile Joey's graveyard, and Jason won't kill Muldratha. They shake on it, and Joey recasts his commander. Alex draws her turn, and replays the Myriad Landscape from his graveyard. He then casts an Avacyn, Angel of Hope, and suddenly Joey wishes he'd popped his deed instead. Alex then moves the boots onto Mareki, and moves to combat. He swings the Clode Muldratha at Jason. And before moving to blockers, Jason activates Una's ability, and tries to get a fairy token. He exiles only one card, and it's Alex's Urborg, and instead decides to block with Una. With his combat step over, Alex then passes. Jason draws, and casts Death Cloud, where X is 5. This has everyone lose 5, discard 5 cards, sacrifice 5 lands, and sacrifice 5 creatures. Jason has chosen 5 because even if Alex steals with Mareki, he'll still have to sacrifice Abyssin. The table then resolves with this effect, and Joey shuffles his graveyard into his library because he discards Ulamog. Jason then passes. JR draws and plays a mountain, passing. Joey decides to untap his vault on his upkeep, draws, and passes turn. Alex draws, and passes. Jason draws, and plays a Swamp, and he then casts Soldavi Adnate before passing turn. JR draws for his turn, and with nothing to do, passes. Joey draws, plays his land, and passes. Alex draws for turn, and plays a Tap Godless Shrine. Jason plays the Swamp he drew, and looks at Alex's graveyard. He casts a Beacon of Unrest, and takes Alex's Archaeomancer, 
The wizard comes in and returns Jason's Diabolic Tutor to his hand. Jason then passes as he shuffles the beacon into his library. JR draws, has nothing to do once more, and passes. Joey draws her turn and he casts a Lotus Cobra before passing. At the end of turn, Alex sacrifices his landscape again for another two basics. Alex casts an Oblivion Sower in his main phase and he exiles Jason's top four cards. He hits one Swamp and gets to play it. Alex then moves the Greaves onto the Sower and swings it at Jason. Jason has to block with everything because of invasion plans and the Cleric and the Wizard die to the Eldrazi. Jason casts Diabolic Tutor in his main phase and goes to find a card, passing to JR. JR is having a heck of a time and he draws, with nothing to do, and passes. Joey draws and looks at some graveyards. Deciding on his target, he casts Necromancy in his main phase and steals Alex Avison. He then taps his vault, sacrifices the Crystal Veins, and pays 6 into Pernicious Deed, destroying all creatures, artifacts, and enchantments that cost 6 or less. With the way now clear, Joey swings his Lotus Cobra at Alex for two, and passes turn. Alex casts his Dragonlord Silumgar in his main phase, and targets Avacyn as the dragon enters. He's a bit disappointed though when Joey decides to sacrifice her to the Altar of Dementia, and he mills Alex for eight instead. With nothing else, Alex passes to Jason. Jason casts a Beseech the Queen in his main phase to search for a card with converted mana cost of five or less. He grabs Chainer, Dementia Master, and passes. Like the several turns before this, JR draws and simply passes. Joey casts Entomb in his main phase, and searching for an Ulamog, passes to Alex. Alex draws for turn, and Joey shuffles his graveyard into his library after putting Ulamog there. Alex then casts a Demir Signet, and he moves to combat. He swings Silumgar at Joey, and with nothing else passes. Jason draws for turn, and casts Crucible of Worlds in his main phase. He gets to play a Swamp from the Graveyard, ooh spooky, and passes turn. JR draws and passes. Joey untaps his Vault, draws for turn, and passes to Alex. Alex draws and moves to combat. He hits Jason with the Dragonlord and passes turn. Jason plays a Swamp from his Graveyard, and he drops Chainer onto the field before passing turn. JR draws, and he plays a Gruul Colored Tapland before passing to Joey. Joey plays a Swamp and gains one green with his Lotus Cobra. He then casts Traverse the Uvenwald in his main phase, going to grab a basic and passing turn. Alex casts Gilded Drake in his main phase and he swaps it with Chainer. He then pays 3 black and 3 life to bring back his Avacyn and he moves to combat. He hits Joey with the Dragonlord again and passes. Jason plays a Deserted Temple from his graveyard, passing. JR finally draws a card he can cast, and out comes a Scorn Villager. Joey plays an island, gaining one mana with his Lotus Cobra, and he taps out to recast Mildratha. Alex decides to use a Disallow to counter this, and with nothing else, Joey passes. Alex plays a Command Tower for his land drop, and loses another 3 life to bring back his Arcanomancer, who in turn returns for Dig Through Time to Alex's hand. Alex then brings back his Commander again, and he moves to combat. This time he hits Joey for 9 with Avacyn, and the Dragonlord goes to Jason. Jason plays a Cabal Stronghold, and he activates it for 7 black mana. He uses 1 to untap it with his Deserted Temple, and then reactivates it again to have a total of 10 floating black mana. He uses this mana to kick a Sadistic Sacrament, and everyone needs to make sure to have a good read of the card. This lets Jason exile 15 cards from Alex's library. He goes through for some of Alex's more threatening cards, and before passing, Jason casts an Oblivion Stone. JR draws, and drops a Bow of Nylea before passing to Joey. Joey plays a land, floats a mana with a Lotus Cobra, and uses it and some lands to cast a Natural Order. He sacrifices the Cobra as part of the cost, and gets to go and find a green creature of his choice. He settles on an Underrealm Lich, and at the end of turn, Alex loses another 3 life to bring back Jason's Meteor Golem, and as it enters, he blows up Jason's Oblivion Stone. Alex plays a Hollowed Fountain untapped, losing 2 life. He then delves away some cards and pays 2 blue to cast Dig Through Time, and keeps the best 2 cards out of his top 7. Moving to combat, he swings Avacyn, Silumgar, and the Golem at Jason for 16. 
Jason draws and plays a swamp from the bin. He activates his stronghold for 8 black mana, uses 1 mana to untap it with the temple, and then retaps it paying 3 more to give him a total of 12 floating black mana. He uses some of it to recast Una, and then taps the rest of his lands. He's able to activate Una's ability, and he puts 8 into the X, exiling 8 cards. He hits 2 creatures from Alex's library, and he goes to find tokens while passing to JR. JR draws, but is just so far behind on lands. He casts a Lambhold Elder, and he passes to Joey. Joey loses one from his vault, and before leaving the upkeep phase, Alex activates Mariki to target the Lich. Before he lets his trigger resolve though, he uses Manamo, School at Water's Edge, to untap his commander, and then retaps her to steal Una. He gets to steal both creatures this way, and Joey then plays a swamp in his main phase and passes. At the end of turn, Alex loses 3 life to bring back the Oblivion Sower, and then Jason's Drana. He also activates Una to exile the top 4 cards of Joey's library, but hits nothing of value. On Alex's upkeep, JR gets to flip his werewolves. Alex plays a swamp, and then he casts Disciple of the Ring. He uses the Disciple to exile some spells from his graveyard, and he taps down most of the creatures on the board. Moving to combat, he takes out Joey and Jason, and with his board state being so far behind, JR concedes to Alex. Game review time. So I always like decks that are based around stealing other people's cards or using their decks better. Things like Trevor's Yidris deck, and in this case Alex's Mariki Rebarret deck, are a lot of fun to see because they're as strong as what you're playing against. I know some people don't like getting their permanents stolen, but this is just an element of the game and you have to get over it. I think unfortunately that JR was really punished by that death cloud because he was drawing a decent amount of lands early on, but as soon as he lost all of his other ones, he was so far behind. I do think that Jason was probably in the right to use Death Cloud because otherwise Alex was going to go unhindered with an active Avacyn on the board and basically no way for people to deal with it. I think he also did a great job of recovering, but unfortunately by playing Chainer, I think he gave Alex the win. I know that Joey was pretty frustrated this game because he wasn't able to draw any of his draw engines and only really basically had reactive spells like Pernicious Deed and Spore Frog, which helped him with combat and blowing stuff up, but didn't forward his board state. It also didn't help that every time that he cast or cloned his commander, Alex basically stole it, which didn't allow him to recur things from his graveyard, which is basically what Muldrotha wants to do anyway. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at mtgmudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.